Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. It's great to have you all here today. So first and foremost, let's talk about what I did in between last episode and this episode. Mainly, I used the Snoogan Goocher, you know, that laser ship we have that just floats up in space, shoots down a plethora of lasers. I used that to clear out three squares of the Scarlet Dawn here, here, and here. And it appears we are blockaded already by another Force Count 3 Strength 40 fleet, probably from the Fortress. So, you know, I, we made a little bit of progress with that, and uh, the reason I'm using this ship is it, had, it has a radar array on the top of the ship, which is giving us nice coverage here of the Scarlet Dawn. I have a feeling the Scarlet Dawn probably goes all the way up here, and to some degree over here is what I'm thinking. But anyways, with that being said, you can see here, uh, we've already got things lined up. This is another fleet the Scarlet Dawn Fortress sent out against us here, so we're blockaded here. I'm thinking we're going to ignore this one for now. Here's where we're going to be focusing. We have a new fleet I have created called Beat Yo Roll. Uh, if I can select it here, one sec. Let me just get down. There we go. Yeah, the Beat Yo Roll fleet. So here's what the makeup of this is. It's one Ursophilia, two drum rolls. These are the community ships we're going to be bringing in today. So let's go ahead and take a look at those while I talk about them briefly. Let's do this. So first off, we've got the Ursophilia. Now, this is the smaller of the two ships. It is about 2K blocks, 620K RP, right around that region, 150,000 metal. Really not that bad. It's quite a, quite a small build compared to some of the other things we've been seeing lately, but it's extremely fast, 110 meters a second. It's a fast flying jet. It's something we've needed in our fleets for sure. It should help us against the Scarlet Dawn a little bit. Of course, you know, hey, fast flying against lasers doesn't necessarily mean a win because lasers just suckle directly towards you. Uh, the Ursophilia also features, excuse me, two uh, AP turrets on the front, you know, on the left and right side, right at the front of the ship there. They're very fast firing. I believe they fire at about 0 0.1 shots per second, so, you know, close to, or 10 shots a second, maybe, maybe a little bit less than that. And it also features on each wing, the left and right, a uh, set of five missiles, so 2x5 missile launchers. These use target pr prediction guidance. They have very short range and a couple of fins, so they can turn decently. It's really not bad. You know, this ship is so fast it can get close to the target and then fire these missiles off. It's it's pretty great. I tested it against some Scarlet Dawn ships in the vehicle designer. It worked out great. Anyways, moving on, the other ship we're bringing in is the drum roll. So what is the Dremel? The Dremel is a mobile heavy weapons platform, and I actually got some good description uh, information or bullet points on this one from the author. So here's what it features. It has four huge cannon turrets. These are heap rounds, 12 AP, 1,000 plus kinetic damage, and 300 explosive damage. Features eight laser detectors, four under the deck, one inside each cannon turret, and each has four to five smoke dis dispensers. So, you know, it's got actually pretty good laser defenses, which is just what we need against the Scarlet Dawn. In fact, I believe this ship was built to fight the Scarlet Dawn, which works out in our advantage, or to our advantage. It also features three separate AI mainframes, uh, one under the small missile battery in the center, which uh, we haven't gotten to yet, and two on the sides of the ship between the cannon platforms. It features two engines, one in the front, one in the back. They are redundant, so if one gets destroyed, the other one keeps going. It has two separate LAM systems, one on each side of the platform. I guess it's kind of hard to discern a side on a platform like this when it's you know, it's like four equal parts, really. And it features four separate ammo compartments encased in uh, metal, so they are very well protected. It has eight large propellers, uses hydrofoils to keep things stable, and has a max speed right around 12 meters a second. It's actually not that bad. Uh, it can get a little wobbly sometimes. So it's 5K blocks, just shy of a million RP, and right around 150,000 metal. Pretty similar cost-wise for metal as uh, the Ursophilia. So, these are the two ships we're bringing in today. We're rocking with the Beat Yo Roll fleet. I, I kind of regret naming it that. When I think about it, I'm, I'm just sitting here going, wow, that really doesn't sound right. Beat Yo Roll? What could that mean? I have no idea. I mean, it could mean that, like, you have a Tootsie Roll pop in your mouth and you're just beating it with your tongue, you know? Beat that roll, man. Anyways, let's go ahead and get down to this. We are fighting a Force Count 6 Strength 170 Scarlet Dawn fleet. We're going to be facing off against an Andromeda, a Nightmare. Those are some big ones. Asteroid, also big. Ah, uh, the nebula. The nebula's a beast. That'll be fun. Okay, let's go ahead and hop down here and get this started. So let's take a look here. Beat your row, beat your row. Spawn it up. How are we looking on our... Okay, so two drum rolls on the left and right. I'd love to bring in 
the whole beat yo roll fleet. So I'm just going to try to bring it in all at once, and we're going to see what happens. Here we go. Now the moment of truth while we wait for things to spawn in. The click has happened. Where's the battle start? Show it to me. It's going to show it real soon here. Uh, I'm going to get my character out of these ships. Warp. There we are. You know what's weird? Why are we not... Why is this guy not spawning in? There it goes. Wait. I don't see any... Oh, here Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Okay. Here we have the drum rolls. We got the Ursophilia launching. Let's get the interface off here. Boop. Oh, everybody's just going crazy. Oh, lordy. Okay, we're really going to need these weapon platforms to rock some face. Uh, oh my gosh. This looks like the nebula right here, is it? Is this the nebula? This looks nebulous, does it not? It is. It's so nebulous looking. What is this majestic thing? What is happening here? The nightmare. Oh, cool. Ship design. Way cool. Alright, well let's see how we're doing here. The lambs on the drum rolls are going crazy right now. We got missiles everywhere. Uh, these guys are popping sweet wheelies in the ocean. Uh, you can see deploying a little bit of smoke here. Not not too much, but we do have some smoke. Let's take a look at our health because I'm having a hard time telling. Oh yeah, we're taking damage. Oh no, the Ursophilia has exploded. The Ursophilia is missing a cannon. Left wing down. Uh oh This isn't good. This isn't good. Alright, let's get down here. Let's see how else we're faring here. We got Scarlet Dawn ships getting a really big spread on us right now. I'm worried. I am worried. Actually, let's take a look here at the Nightmare. He's directly over the weapons platforms, but the problem is these weapon platforms are very big gauge. And that translates to slower tracking for the turret system. So as these ships are fast flying, you know, it, it may be flying just... A little bit faster than the uh, high gauge turrets can turn to track it which is why you see all of our shots just kind of missing here take a look at our health Ursphilia down for the count one of the drum rolls is doing just fine at hundred percent health oh yeah Th this is really tough when you bring cannons and missiles to a laser fight things get really tough my friends I don't recommend it I, I recommend having at least something lasery what else do we have in the vicinity here I did bring the apocalypse throne and I did bring... I think we have the incoming DACA fleet. Let's look. Yes. So, if uh, if things are starting to look rough, we're going to bring in the Scarlet Destroyer. You know, that is... Uh, that's the I call it the Sky Toothpick. You know, it's it just packs uh, a bunch of lasers and it's super... It's literally like the length of a football field. It is crazy. Alright, how we doing? One of the drum rolls taking some hits. Let's see if we can get our character down in there. Which one of you guys is taking the damage? It's this one. He's at 75%. Listing heavily. He's got a sweet list going on there. Does it have a seat for us? It does. Great. And let's make sure we don't have the weapons selected. Okay. We're good. Uh, we They are about to collide, though. Well, he's really popping it, though. You know, the good news, though, is when, uh, when ships are popping and locking like that, you know, doing sick wheelies like this, uh, it gives the cannons better elevation. You know, they don't have to track as high up because they're already pointing up. So the worry is this, though. I don't know if we've actually actually even hurt any of the Scarlet Dawn ships. There were six here. And as of right now, there are still six here. <laughs> this isn't good. How's that Ursophilia doing? Oh, boy. 57%. Come on. That's, that's so rough. I don't even... It's probably in the ocean somewhere. Let's look around. There's one, two. Yeah, it's right over there. Uh, enhance. Enhance. Continue to enhance. Excellent. Yeah, it's way over there. Just doing his thing. Oh, man. Both of our drum rolls are on top of each other. We don't have enough space to bring in any other ships right now. I would probably have to... Uh, I may as well go ahead and despawn the Ursophilia. We know that that will not be doing anything for us right now. Uh, we have a situation occurring over here, ladies and gentlemen. Some sort of merging shenanigans going on between both drum rolls. Both wanting to play that sweet, sick beat. Both getting on top of each other's grill, though. Their grits are mixing. You know what happens when you mix grits. Actually, amazing things can happen when you mix grits. Like, if 
if one set of grits is just normal and the other one's like cheese grits, then then you've got like pretty good cheese grits now, you know? Take the best of both worlds. All right, so here's the nebula. Cruising for a bruising, probably completely untouched as we get utterly wrecked right now. Let's get a little closer. Nebula, yeah, yeah okay, we've taken off about 50 blocks. That is absolutely nothing to write home about. Okay, so let's take one drum roll out of the equation here. Oh, man, really? I still can't bring in... Okay, we can bring in the Iron Carrion Beetle. We know from previous battles that that, is, that has fared very well. So let's bring it in. Let's do it. I've made the executive decision right here. Right then. We, we, we just had to bring it in. So what do we have over here? Some sort of tiny, tiny rogue craft here. I love the way these look. The Scarlet Dawn just have such a very... It's a Wraith. All right. I'm not even worried about you, Wraith. I ain't even worried, bro. Oh, no. Oh, oh, the Iron Carrion. No. His AI's off. Oh, and the Iron Carrion Beetle does not have a way to get out of the water when it's in the water. So, that is hosed. That is completely hose balled. Oh, no. And it just got nailed by a missile. Oh, no. Yeah, so... Oh... If you build a big ship, definitely makes a lot of sense to give it some way to get back out of the water. I feel like it's inevitable. Most ships, at some point in their lifetime, during the Let's Plays that I make, they will be in the water. I guarantee it. Hey, so you know what's strange? I was fighting off camera, right? And I, uh, I fought a couple of big fleets. One of them was like 180 points. And in one of them, I fought three Dominions, all in one fleet. But all three of them spawned in the water. I have not yet seen a Dominion spawn outside of the water uh, in my campaign. I'm, I'm starting to wonder if the spawning is a little bugged for some of these ships. You know, there should be a clause that, like, like when uh, enemy factions are spawning in ships, if, if you want them to spawn in correctly, I think there should be some check um, on enemy faction ships. Like, you know, if a Dominion is going to spawn under X amount of feet, then go ahead and move it up to the minimum, like 50 feet or meters or whatever. You know what I mean? This way you won't have ships spawning in the water. They need minimum uh, definitions to find for them. And if they ever break under that threshold, move them back above it. Just small things like that, you know? Okay, so we're finally hitting the nebula. The uh, drum roll has connected. Finally. Oh, feels so good. Nebula, go. Where's our Ursophilia? Right down there. So this is good, actually. The Ursophilia might have been the one to connect. I don't know. Look at these high high gauge shells, though. Let's see. Here we go. Connections inbound. Boom. Oh, that feels so good. Let's take a look at our health here. The one drum roll we have in commission is at ninety eight percent. The Iron Carrion Beetle is taking a little bit of damage. You know what could help one of these cannons? Ooh, 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 ooh. Hang on. Here's what I'm gonna do. Let me turn my volume down. Let's build on this thing. I normally don't do this. Let's shrink the blocks. Let's find the gauge increasers. I'm gonna... I am going to make this faster uh, tracking. Let's see what its tracking speed is right now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We can't see tracking speed. What am I talking about? Anyways, let's find the gauge increasers. Boop, there goes two. I'm just going to do it to one of the cannons. I'm just assuming this was built in mirror mode. If not, then I'm really removing some good parts here, potentially. All right, I'm just looking for any other potential gauge increasers here. Why am I not seeing any more? This cannon is, is, is still, like, crazy massive. Where'd you put the gauge increasers on this thing, man? Is this them? Oh, here they are. Boop, boop, ba -da, boop, boop. Removing the gauge increases. Making my pants fly right on home. There we go. Look at that. Super tiny squeech barrel. Look at this little tiny barrel. But look, it tracks so much faster. Watch. We may actually be able to land some hits now. From tiny barrel, 5,000. Actually, let us also take a look here and see what his elevation is. Elevation 80. Okay, so it's maxed out. It has max elevation. That's good. That's that's what I wanted. So, let's go take a look. While I was sitting there putzing around with stuff. Uh, ooh, the nebula. We have taken the nebula down. I will say the nebula's out. Down for the count. AI is dead. Oh my gosh, I'm right here. Go! Even though it's already disintegrating. Never mind. I think already too much is disintegrating. 
My thought was if I could just capture it, if I just get close enough, we'll get the remaining scraps. We have 2.2 million metal. Let's see. Oh, come on, Grundlebot. You need like a little, a little arse booster, you know? Boom! Just get us over there. Come on. Come on, Timmy. No! No. Give me it. Got it. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're getting some resources for it. Cools. Cools. Oh, okay, we got about 100,000 metal. I mean, maybe a little bit less. But I will take it. We need all the metal we can get, my friends. So what are we left with here? Did the super tiny gauge cannon help at all? I don't know. It's not really doing anything. Look, he's just sitting here being all janky. <laughs> he can't even aim right. He's like, I need the big gauge to work. You've removed. Whoa, look how quick he moves up, though. Oh, yeah, look at that. Just rocking into this guy. See, that's, that's, this makes the drum roll epic. What I would probably do with this is I, if I were building this, I would have kept two of the cannons super high gauge, two of the cannons as low gauge as possible. That way you've got slow tracking, high power, and fast tracking, lower power. You know, and it, it would be the fast tracking ones that hopefully disable some critical parts of a ship before the high gauge ones can really focus in. Honestly though, I think that made a big difference for us. That, I think that really did. It just, it doesn't seem to want to like, snoog up. Oh, hang on, a little missile? We're, got us good, it got us good. All right, let's take a look here. We're still fighting the nightmare. Here we go, we're finally hitting it. I made a bunch more alterations on the drum roll. I changed all the cannons to lower gauge. Uh, although it seems, when I, when I change the gauge on the cannons, they don't shoot as much. They they only seem to shoot when something's directly over it. And I know, you know, when you have higher gauge, you do get more range on your cannons. I did test that. Higher range, bu uh, higher gauge bullets can travel further. So maybe that has something to do with it, but I highly doubt the range, like, you know, between high gauge and low gauge would be any different when the enemy is like 100 meters or less away, you know? Regardless, that gave us the tracking we needed. It took about five minutes for us to finally get a bead on it, but here we go, we're about to get another enemy spawning in. Let's see here, drum roll. We'll see how we fare against the next ship that spawns in. There it is. That looks like a meteor. Could be, let's find out. Oh, that's an asteroid. That 15,000 blocks. And he's got lasers, oh boy. He's already removed one of our turrets. And see, this is where high gauge cannons would have been just majestic. Because the high gauge cannons are probably the ones that can get this far. And now they're all low gauge. And now we gotta fight this guy. He's got a what looks to be a continuous beam laser, I think. Oh my goodness. Let's go see how bad he's hurting us. Oh, I guarantee you. Oh yeah, he's taking us down quick. Alright, let's take him out of play here. We're gonna bring in the Scarlet Destroyer. I think... Where is it? It's way over there. Yeah, let's do it. Let's give the Scarlet Destroyer a chance here. We've been taking a beating from the Scarlet Dawn today. This has been... Woo! Oh, please don't crash. Oh me, oh my, oh. Look where this spawned in. What the... Please have your AI on. Okay, AI is on on the Scarlet Destroyer. We are getting some crazy lag. I wonder if that Scarlet Destroyer is the source of our lag. We do have more blocks than I would like to have in play here. Oh look, the Ursophilia down here. I mean, I'm sorry, the Iron Carrion Beetle, which is way down at the bottom of the ocean now, is firing his cannons up through the water. Look at that. Beautiful bean footage. I want to see a hit on the meteor. Something, I mean the asteroid. I don't know if I like the shape of the asteroid, to be honest. I don't know if I like that. I can see some shots coming from the drum roll from way over there. So we're still getting hits. And there's the Scarlet Destroyer getting the lasers. That's what we needed. We needed some laser action against these guys. Woo! This has been a tough one. Look at that. The AI's already dead. Oh. Can I can I get over here somehow? I want to capture. Oh, man. I'm so far. Oh, I will never be able to get over here. By the time this fully disintegrates. I mean, we just beat the asteroid. Look how easy that was. Let's see what we did here. 
We t it only took 3,000 blocks to completely disable the ship. Uh-oh. I think we might have been disabled in the process, though. Oh, no. Yep. Scarlet Destroyer, 91%. Let's go ahead and get our guys sitting down in there. The old warp. I hope there's a chair. There is. All right. The AI is dead. I guess I could take control. It's just we're lagging so bad right now. Actually, screw that. I don't want to take control. This is... Yeah, it's the Scarlet Destroyer. The moment I brought this in, it is crazy lag. I mean, I'm talking... Holy smokes. I want to bring it back out of play. Well, we beat the asteroid. We can consider it dead, right? AI dead? And there goes the asteroid. One asteroid down. 652 trillion left in space. Probably probably so many more than that. I'm seeing I think the iron carrion beetle is it really This is this is where the action's at under here in the ocean, under the sea, you know. Set up a little shop down ooh, ooh an under the water coffee shop. Has anybody even thought about that yet? Oh, okay, we got the last ship spawning in. Let's see what we get. We got the Scarlet Destroyer, aka Sky Toothpick. Rockin' and rollin' against... Let's see if I can name this. Alright, it's not a nightmare. It's not a meteor. It's gotta be in a... a oh, the Andromeda! It's such a cool ship! I really dig it. If anything, I will say this. The Scarlet Dawn has some extremely unique designs. They are so cool. Let's get the interface off. Boop! Here we are. The boop signifies uh, off. I should set up voice commands. Instead of hitting, like, you know, uh, F9 to turn off the old interface, I should be able to say something like, pants out off equals true. And then my computer detects it and sends F9. Oh my god, I should seriously do that. I'm getting all excited about it right now. That should be a thing. All right, anyways. Here's the uh, Scarlet Destroyer. This is what I call the uh, Sky Toothpick. Look at it. Tell me that's not a Sky Toothpick. Huh? Pew, pew, pew. It's it's just epic. You know, I think one of my favorite things so far in this game is just all the different designs people come up with and how effective they can be. You can have the ugliest looking design that's more effective than anything you've ever seen. Or then you have just this massive, like, aesthetically pleasing, beautiful, gorgeous creation that, you know, doesn't even shoot. It's just great. You get the, you get the full gamut with this game. So here we go, we are taking the Andromeda out of the sky. That's right, Stephen King made this ship. It's one of his babies. He's rocking and rolling. I'm pretty sure we're gonna win this one. Although, look, I mean, we took some damage, all right? We, uh, Ursophilia practically dead. I'll see about repairing that. And the drum roll, both drum rolls, at one point, one was down to like 70 or 80%. I mean, we really took a hammering there. Iron Carry and Beetle down to 79%. Let's get the interface back on. Boop, boop. I actually pressed the button later after I did the boop. That's not good. There we go. Look at it. Falling apart. Bits and pieces. Oh, by the way, we're level 432. <laughs> I just can't get enough of it. It's so great. And there we go. Everything's running smooth, silky smooth, like a baby's bottom. Which is weird to say. It's really weird. All right, and there we are, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit more progress against the Scarlet Dawn. This was a tough one. You can see really what it means to fight the Scarlet Dawn with ships that aren't necessarily meant to fight the Scarlet Dawn. Like even the weapons platform, the drum roll, which was built to fight the Scarlet Dawn, had insane issues fighting the Scarlet Dawn because it was cannons, high gauge cannons, and uh, missiles, you know, and the high gauge cannons have a hard tracking problem and the Scarlet Dawn are fast. You know, they're, uh, they're not mutually good things to have together at the same time. So that can make things difficult. I have a feeling every single one of these episodes, we're going to be suffering a good bit of defeat in one way or another. You know, I consider a win where we, you know, maybe don't drop below 90% with any ship. So anytime we start getting hammered like that, we, we really play catch up a little bit. But it's fun. I like the very, uh, just the variants of the Scarlet Dawn and how tough they can be. It's, it's a really cool faction. I'm enjoying them so far. I can't wait to take over this stack of, of chocolate bars or whatever the heck we want to call these. Definitely some sort of, you know, Nestle Hershey's chocolate stack of goodness. Got to get my face in there. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out. If you have any comments or suggestions or you just want to chat it up, feel free to do so. And, of course, if you've submitted ships in the queue and you're curious where they are or you just want to make sure I still have them in the queue or you don't even know what the queue is, feel free to ask about that as well. I'm all, I'm all ears. I'm all for it. So, 
Anyways, looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. And until then, hope you all have a great one. Take it easy and stay classy.